<clears throat> hello, I'm also hello, Brandon Knapp again, and I'm now going to be reading a Charlotte Dunois X-Mail reader uh, story, which is uh, the character Charlotte Dunois from the uh, Infinite Stratos anime series and also a light novel. I'm pretty sure I'm correct about that. And yeah, this is a, another story. It's a Charlotte X-Mail reader story. Okay, all right, let's let, let's begin. You wake up in the morning and look around your room. You see all the boxes for your stuff that was that you packed the night before. And remember that you are heading to the IS Academy in Japan. You remember that it had been almost a year since you stumbled upon the abandoned IS unit. You're walking through an abandoned building on the edge of your town and found it. You touched it and the machine responded to you. Security had found you and the unit in the building... Uh, they immediately called your parents and reported what they had seen. Since that day, your parents agreed to send you to the World World IS Academy, but wanted to at least wait until you finished middle school. You slowly get out of your bed and get dressed for the day. You were supposed to take you were taking a plane at nine at night to travel to Japan. Supposedly there'd be someone from the academy there when you got to Japan to pick you up. Grab the manual of the IS unit basic instructions and head downstairs to eat breakfast. When you get downstairs and sit down at the table at the table to eat, your mom appears in the room with a plate and a smile on her face. I am. I hope you are prepared to start a new life over there. You can call us anytime you want. Your dad and me are so happy for you. Your mom says, "Thanks, mom. I'm just a little nervous." Is all you say. I hope. Uh, I understand how you must feel, but remember, you are part of this family. We will all support you. Your mom says. You just nod your head and finish eating. After you are finished eating, you head back upstairs to slowly start your to start bringing your stuff downstairs to start packing it in the car. After a few minutes, your dad comes and helps you bring stuff down and pack in the car. Well, son, I got a call from the school before you woke up this morning. They will have a private jet des designed just for picking students up with a lot of luggage, picking you up, a lot of luggage picking you up at the airport here. They decided to come get you themselves, and the plane will take you directly to the academy. According to them, they have their own airstrip that are for, of, of two runways for picking up students individually. Most important, though, to members to have fun and make some friends there, your dad says to you. I will, Dad. I love you both and hope you can visit when you both have time, you both say to him. Your dad gives you a hug, and you both head in so you can continue studying. You study and study until your dad comes into the room and says it's time to go. You close the book and get in the car. Uh, with your dad. It took 20 minutes to, for the ride to the airport. When you get there, you go to the main desk and they uh, direct you to a runway. Your dad run, drives up to the plane on the runway and a bunch of girls get out of the plane and walk over to you. Hi, I'm Tatanashe, the school, student council president. This woman next to me is Miss Oedemura. She'll be our teacher in over your dorm. We have you, have you set up with a, uh, with a room with someone already at the academy. I hope you don't mind, but you'll be sharing a room with a girl, a blue-haired woman said to you. That's fine. I promise to be on my best behavior, you say as you bow. All right, girls, grab the stuff and help start getting it on the plane, Mrs. Tatsunashi yells, barking out orders. A bunch of girls approach the car and start grabbing all of your stuff, loading it on the plane in under five minutes. Once they are done, have all your stuff on the plane, you turn towards your dad. Well, son, I guess this is goodbye for now. Uh, your mom and I will be visiting in a few months, and we hope to see some progress, your dad says. You hug your dad tightly all of a sudden, and your dad hugs you back. Well, time for you to go, son, your dad says, letting go of you. You nod your head and turn towards the plane. You take a deep breath and get on the plane. Once, you're, once you sit down and buckle in, you hear the engines roar to life. The plane lurches forward slowly and then takes off. Tatanashi hands you a pillow. Try and get some sleep. We have a long plane ride ahead of us, Tatanashi says. You grab the pillow and tell her thanks. You lean on, t you lean, uh, uh, you, you walk uh, to a chair and lean the chair back and notice that all the girls are watching you. You just shake your head thinking that you are imagining it. You recline the chair back and stick the pillow behind your head. The last thing you remember is staring at the ceiling of the plane. Next is, okay, prologue part two. You're waking up from someone shaking you. When you open your eyes and look to see who it is, it's, it is Tatsunashe. You stretch out your your arms and legs out and notice that some of the girls are in an outfit light uh, outfit uh, outfit like a nightgown nightgown, but still holds but still holds class for the academy. Hey, uh, hey, Chris, it's time to get up. We'll be arriving at the airport really soon. Tatsunashe says to you. You nod and head to the bathroom and notice there's two lines. You join the queue of the shorter line and notice that some of the girls are looking at you and whispering about you. You can just make out some of the words they're saying. Hey, isn't that 
Chris Flames. He's like the second guy to ever be able to control an IS. He's gorgeous. Wonder if wonder if he'll get a girlfriend while he is here. You just shook your head at all the comments. You decided to ignore them and just go about your business. Suddenly, Tatanashi comes up and taps behind you and taps you on the shoulder, causing you to lightly jump by being surprised. Well, aren't you popular already with the girls? Tatanashi exclaims. Not hit, looking for a girlfriend, he said loud enough for all the girls to hear. Some of the girls instantly had sad looks on their faces. You weren't trying to crush their hearts. You just weren't ready for a relationship right now. You wanted to keep your head in the game and make your country proud along with your family. You noticed that you were up next and turned to face Tatanashi. Sorry, but if you will excuse me, I have to freshen up a little before we get off the plane, he said while giving her a slight bow. You head in when the girl comes out. Uh, you get out your pack and pull out some clothes. You change quickly into the school uniform that was specifically done, designed to fit you and brush your teeth. You brush your hair and make sure that er that is properly groomed and head out of the bathroom. You make your way back make your way back to the seat. When you sit down, Tatanashi hands you some papers. This is to let you know where your classes are and where your room will be. I hope you and your roommate will get, get along just fine. If the two of you have any problems with each other, let me know. I'll be glad to help any way possible. Tatanashi says with a smile on her face. Thanks. If I have any questions that my roommate can't help you with, I'll be sure to come to you, you say. Just as you get done, a girl's voice comes over the on over the, in the intercom. This is your pilot speaking. Please take your seats and buckle in. We are about to land. Just waiting for clearance right now, the pilot's voice uh, said over the intercom. Everyone took their seats and buckled up. Slowly, the plane started to descend. The plane lands faster than what you thought it would, and the entryway is extended outwards to the plane you hear a clink uh, a click sound as the entryway attaches to the side and the door opens up everyone unbuckles and starts grabbing their gear once everyone has their stuff you slowly follow the plane in line two lines down the entryway you eventually arrive on the other side other side into a huge room please follow me to your room uh chris tatanashi says you just nod your head and follow her si silently thinking about how your roommate will react to sharing a room with a guy takes 15 minutes uh, to get to your room. Tatsunashi stops and turns towards you. Well, here's your room. Your roommate and you are actually in the same classes, so she should be able to help you get ar help you get around. She is shy but kind. Her and me have already talked to each other, and she has agreed to help you out. She should already be in here in the room since she didn't have class today. I will see you soon, Tatsunashi says, and then takes off leaving you standing in front of your room by yourself. Well, this is it. I'm finally here. Time to greet my roommate, and I hope she doesn't hate me right away. You turn the door nut, turn the knob, and open the door. You walk in and hear the shower going. You you uh, your face turns bright red. Hello, you must be my room, new roommate. Give me a minute to get dressed. You hear a girl's voice coming from the shower bathroom. You hear ruffling and then a click as the door as the lock disengages in the bathroom and it slides opening, revealing a gr uh, a girl with golden blonde hair. Chapter one: Meeting your roommate. You couldn't help but stare at the girl. Her voice sounded more towards the boy, but you could tell she was a girl. When you were standing there, realize th there thinking about her, she came out close to you. When you, when you realized she was only inches away from your face, you snapped back to reality and back away up away from her. What's wrong? She asked. Sorry, I'm just a little bit uncomfortable being close to any girls. You say and blush. Please tell me, Tatanashi didn't do anything to you. She asked. No, she didn't. I thought I was confident being able to share a room with a girl, but to, to, to be honest, I'm a little uncomfortable. You say. I don't bite. Make yourself at home while I brush my hair, she says. You go over to the bed that would be yours, which is easy to tell since her bed had stuffed animals all over it, and sit down. You lay back on the bed to relax because you're still feeling fatigued from jet lag. The next thing to happen was you passing out. Charlotte eventually noticed that you were sleeping and came over to your bed and tucked you in. Well, he did have a long flight. He, I will just show him around tomorrow, she thought. Charlotte went and laid down on her bed after changing into her sleeping gown. The blinds to the room were already closed. Charlotte reached over and hit the light switch, hit the switch on the wall to shut the lights off. Three hours later, you wake up and remember that your roommate was going to introduce her, herself. She, you felt ashamed that you ended up falling asleep. You look over in the room, no, dark, and notice that she was sleeping. You swing your eyes to see that she was wearing what she was wearing, but because but she because she didn't have a uniform on and blush, she was in a nightgown. You quickly look away, but couldn't help noticing how cute she was in the gown. You grab a set of clothes and head to take a shower. You let the hot water ease your muscles and wash away the tension and fatigue from riding in the plane. You head out of the bathroom once you are done, dressed, and notice that the light in the, to the room was on. You turn to see where she was at and notice she was sitting on the edge of her bed as if she was waiting for you. You blush because she was still in her nightgown. Um, could you change into something else, please, you say, while well, blushing. Does this bother you? I'm sorry. I didn't think it would bother you. Uh, bother you of me dressing on my nightgown i'll hurry up and change by the way my name is charlotte dunois she says she quickly grabs an outfit and goes in the bathroom to change 
You couldn't help but be embarrassed considering this is the first time seeing a girl dressed like that. Chapter 2. Uh, getting to know your roommate. Charlotte uh, Charlotte comes out of the bathroom a few minutes later dressed in her school uniform. You still thought she was cute, but it didn't bother you now that she wasn't in a nightgown that was see-through. I'm so very sorry for making you uncomfortable, Charlotte says. It's all right. I'm just not used to being girls uh, around girls, let alone sharing a room with one. If I ever do something that makes you un un uncomfortable, please let me know, you say. As long as you don't come out naked from the bathroom, there's not any there isn't anything that would bother me, Charlotte says. Fair. Well, Tata and I said you would show me around the school, you say. We will do it tomorrow. For now, do you want to get something to eat? Charlotte asks. Sure, you say. All right, I'll introduce you to my friends at lunch, Charlotte says while grabbing the keys to the room. You both head out and you follow her to the cafeteria to get something to eat. Uh, you both get there and, ask, and order something to eat. Once you have your have a tray, you follow her to a table with one guy and six girls. Charlotte sits down and motions for you to sit next to her. You sit down next to her and notice that one of the girls was Tatanasha. You nod at her and she nods back. Hey, everyone. I'd like to introduce you to my new roommate, Charlotte said. Everyone looks at you and says hi. The girl with the long black hair is Hoki. Cecilia has the long blonde hair. Obviously, you know Tatanasha. The girl with the same blue hair color as, as Tatanasha is her younger sister, Kansashi. The girl with black hair that is done up in buns is Lin. Is, is Reen. Um, is Lin. Uh, Lara is and Lara is the girl with platinum ha uh, platinum hair, and each is the guy in our group. Charlotte says while each person waved their hand as their name is mentioned. Hi everyone, I hope we can all be friends. You say. So what would you like to do after eating? Charlotte asks you. How about going back to her room and studying some of the material in the handbook that I was going to read? You ask. Sounds wonderful. Charlotte says. It took about an hour, half an hour to eat because everyone was being friendly and trying to get to know you. You eventually loosened up and told them that you were American. They didn't seem mad or hate you when you told. You felt that you could trust them. It was nice making friends for once and not having people hate you because of where you, you were from. You and Charlotte get up and head back to your room. When you get back, when you get there, Charlotte holds a, a key to you. Here's the other key to her room. Don't worry about entering the room. If you want in, just come in, Charlotte says. You grab the key from her and she unlocks the door with her key. You both enter the room and go get go go to get your books to study together. You felt that you and her would become really good friends and was glad that she was so nice to you. Once it started to get dark outside, you both decided to head to bed. Charlotte pulls out a section from the wall. We could change this way without having to use the bathroom. It blocks each other uh, each other from view, giving us privacy, Charlotte says, from the other side of the wall. Thanks, Charlotte. You're very kind, you say. Are you dressed? Charlotte asks. Yeah, why, you say. You see her hand come around from the around the edge as you push the section section back into the wall. She was dressed in a nightgown, but this time you couldn't see through it. Let's get some sleep. Oh, if you ever need anything, just wake me up, Charlotte says while climbing into her bed. Okay, and thanks again, Charlotte, you say, while climbing into your bed. Sweet dreams, Chris, Charlotte says. You too, Charlotte, you say. You, you turn over on your side, away, facing away from her, and fall asleep quickly. Uh, okay, except, chapter three, accepting consequences for your actions. You wake up feeling a little exhausted still and felt something holding onto your hand. You looked over and, sit and see, seeing that Charlotte is asleep in the chair next to your bed and is holding onto your hand. What are you doing? You exclaimed loudly. Charlotte opened her eyes and looked at you. You were twitching and mumbling in your sleep as if you were having a nightmare. When I put my hand on top of yours, you settled down and went back to sleeping peacefully, Charlotte said. Sorry for causing you worry. I'm just nervous about at start uh, starting at a new school. I'm the only other male in the school in the world besides each going to be able to use an IS unit. You say, "It's all right. You'll be fine." We need to get to class before we are late. Charlotte says, "Right, let's hurry." You say, "Both Charlotte and you make it to the classroom, but unfortunately, but you both are late." Mr. Miss Dumois and Mr. Flame, you both are late. I went 15 laps around the arena after school from each of you. Miss Orimara says, "Yes, ma'am." Both Charlotte and you say. Both of you sit down at your desk as Miss Yamada starts to class. Before lunch, you had to sit. You had to sit through classes of the history of the IS unit and mechanic, mathematics course dealing with the functions on an IS unit. After class was dismissed, you call out to Miss Orimura. Miss Orimura, can I have a word with you real quick? You ask. What is it, Mister Flame? Miss uh, Miss Orimura asks. You explain why both Charlotte and you were late and ask that you could do Charlotte's lap for her because of it. That is acceptable. Please inform Miss Dunois that she doesn't have to do the laps and why, Miss Orimura says before turning around and walking away. You could have sworn she had a smile on her face as she walked away. Now it's time to meet up with everyone for lunch and explain to Charlotte that she didn't have to lift and hope that you did the right thing.
Chapter 4, A Gentleman's Chivalry. Uh, you head off towards the clock. You head off the... You head off towards the cafeteria to join everyone. You reach the cafeteria and get some cheeseburgers and fries. Once you had enough on your tray, you head over to the table that has your friends and sit down with them. Everyone seems to be engaged with conversation with each other, so you just sit there and remain quiet. You start eating and keep your head down, not to paying attention to anyone. What you didn't know is that Charlotte was watching you. Chris, are you all right? Charlotte says. You look up and notice everyone's looking at you and has stopped talking. Well, kind of. I took the liberty of explaining to Miss Orimura why we were both of why we were late and asked not to punish you. She accepted it, so you don't have to. Have to. You say to Charlotte, "Thank you." That does, still doesn't answer why you look a little pale. Charlotte says, "Well, I don't know. I didn't know if you would be mad at me for doing that." You say with an embarrassed look on your face. I'm not mad by any means. Charlotte says. You go up, got go to look up and see everyone's reaction when all of a sudden you pass out. Your head, your head hit the table. The th sickening thud. Get him to the infirmary now, yelled Charlotte. Three hours later, you wake up and look around to see that you're in a bed. You are in a bed in the infirmary. You notice Charlotte asleep by your side of your bed, and she is holding onto your hand. For some reason, you couldn't move any part of your body. You look down and notice that you're you that there are straps holding you down. Charlotte, you say off curiosity. Charlotte stirs a little and then opens her eyes. All of a sudden, she flings herself on top of you and hugs you. You see tears stream down her face. I'm so happy you are okay, she says while sobbing. I'm fine now. Please don't cry, you say. Just then, Miss Orimura and Miss Yamada come in with a, the nurse and the do and doctor. How are you feeling, Chris Flames? Miss Orimura asks. I'm feeling fine. Is there any way you can move the strains, please, you say, and ask. Miss Orimura nods her head, and the nurse removes the strain, or the straps holding you down. You put your arms around uh, Charlotte to try and get her to calm down. I think it's time to explain to Charlotte about your condition, Miss Orimura says. You sit up, still holding on to Charlotte. You push her back a little and lift her head up to where she can see your face. You look. She looks up at you. She isn't sobbing, sobbing anymore, but tears still silently stream down her face. Well, I have a condition where, that sometimes when I get wor worried too much, I end up getting sick and sometimes pass out. They put me with be, put me with being your roommate because they knew if something bad happened that you would be kind enough to look out for me. I'm thankful for that, and I didn't mean to scare you. Can you forgive me for not telling you, you say and ask? Yes, I can forgive you, but please don't ever keep something that, impor something that important for me again. I know that we may not see each other well, but I see you as my friend, and I care. Uh, and I care about you. And everyone else does too. I think so. I think you should tell them. Charlotte says. I think you're right. You say. Well, you two, uh, he you two head back in onto into your room and relax. You can do the laps another some other day. You need some rest right now, Miss Orimore says. With that said, Miss Orimore leaves, and everyone else go does does. Two, leaving just you and Charlotte together. Charlotte helps you get dressed, and, and since you're so nauseous, and you both head back to your room together. Chapter five: uh, painful nightmare and similarities between you and Lara. Uh, Charlotte helps you get helps you back uh, get back to your guys's room, which was a slow process with how many times you about fell over. She slightly braced you again up against the wall using her body as she got the key and turned the lock on the door. Once she was able to push the door open, she carried you over uh, over to your bed and laid you down. You were still a little out, uh, uh, still out a little, until you know she undone the undone, undid the front of your pants. You grabbed her quickly while still in shock. What are you doing? You asked. You have to get into your sleeping clothes. I am only helping you change. Don't worry, just relax. Charlotte said. You just nodded, letting her help you. It only took a few minutes after relaxing again before you passed out from exhaustion. You slowly drift off into a dream state. In your dream, you look around and see people in lab coats. You look down and, see, and notice that you are strapped down. That uh, you're strapped down, and there are IVs and you're stuck in your arms with fluids running through them. Your mind recognizes the place in the dream. People are talking, and that and you can hear them talking about some sort of experiment. It took you a while to figure out that it was you that they were experimenting on. You start to struggle and try to thrash around to get free, but the restraints had you strapped down too tightly that you couldn't shift any part of your body. And it started injecting needles into you. Uh, inj started injecting needles in you. Some needles pulled out blood, while others injected fluids of different colors into you. You let out a scream of pain as you're injected with a blue needle blue, full of blue substance. You wake up with Charlotte yelling your name. You automatically reach up, grabbing her into a hug and crying. Are you all right? Charlotte says, with a concern on her face. You start you start crying even harder when she asks you that. All of a sudden, the bedroom door comes crashing in. 
with Tatsunashi and the gang behind her. Everyone had a looked work, or, or, worried look on their faces. What is going on in here? Tatsunashi says. I just had a nightmare. Everyone, please come in here. I have something to tell you all you say. Before everyone could sit down to listen, Miss Orimura shows up. Uh, another door to be replaced. Miss Tatsunashi, you, please quit destroying doors, Miss Orimura said. Sorry about that, but there were reports of screams coming from this room, so I acted on impulse, Tatsunashi says. Ah, uh, I figured this would happen. Well, it's about time you explain to all of them. Miss Orimar says before walking away, what does she mean? Hoki says, well, my nightmare is hard to talk about because it deals with my past, you say, laying out deep, taking a deep breath and laying it out. As you all know, I am the second guy in the world to use an IS unit. That's due to experimentation that was done on me. I was put through some horrible experiments. They ran tests for months on me. I was injected with different types of liquid and even had my blood taken twice a day. They were trying to figure out how, how to make it where, where, where a guy could operate an IS unit. Unfortunately, the project was discovered, and the government stepped in, shutting the project down, arresting everyone. The government put me in a home with two really rich parents. They became my mother and father. They were kind and weren't stuck up like most people that are rich. They would come for me when I had nightmares and would help me help, help would help me out whenever they could. They didn't care about money and spent a lot of time with me. I made the decision one day to see if the experiment worked, so they spent the money to allow me to try piloting an IS unit to success. It worked. After I found out I was able to use an IS unit, I decided to come here and and develop the skills to become an IS pilot. My, my parents supported me and had contacted the director here. Miss Oriamura was kind enough to accept me. She already knows about my past, uh, and so now here I am. My goal was originally was to not get involved with anyone here and focus only on my skills as an IS pilot, pilot but that all, all has changed. Meaning you guys have changed my whole perspective on things. I finally found a group of people that accept me as myself. I thank you all for that. You say, then suddenly burst into tears again. Charlotte holds on to you until you calm down again. Well, I already know about your past from Miss Wimora. I was told to keep quiet. I'm happy that you are able to trust us and tell to everyone, Tatsunashi says with a smile on her face. After everyone calmed down, you all had made dinner and ate together in your room. You spent the rest of the day relaxing and hanging with your friends. When nighttime came, uh, nighttime hit everyone, and everyone left, you left. You noticed Charlotte looking at you. you. Is there something on your mind? You ask her. Can I share your bed tonight? Charlotte said with an embarrassed look on her face. If that if that is what you want, you said while climbing into your bed. Charlotte climbs into bed next to you. She sifts slightly until she is curled up next to you. You can see the worried look on her face. She's hit. Chapter 6. When, exper when experimentation affects your body, you wake up not remembering the last few minutes before falling asleep and feeling something heavy against your body. You pull the sheet back and see and see Charlotte curl up against you. You ended up freaking out and fall out of the bed, causing Charlotte to sit up and look around. What happened, said Charlotte said, looking at you with a concern in your eyes. Why are you in your bed with me? Yes, with a surprised tone. Well, after everything last night, I thought you needed some comforting, and when I asked you if it was all right, you said it was, it was, it was if that's what, it was what I wanted to do. Charlotte says, I'm char sorry, Charlotte. My mind is a little foggy this morning, you said while sitting up in bed. You notice that you're dressed in your sleeping attire. You turn to Char look at Charlotte, and as if reading your mind, she tells you that she helped you get changed into your sleeping clothes last night. I'm really sorry for causing you so much trouble, you say with a look of guilt on your face. It's okay. Just if you have any problems, please let me know. Don't hide things from me, is all I ask, Charlotte says. After you both got done talking, you both get up and get dressed. You both asked if each other, if the other was done dressing before turning and facing each other. You end up staring at Charlotte, and your mind and your mind goes blessing your dress and her outfit, but she's also wearing a little bit of makeup too. Is something the matter? Charlotte asks. Um, no, sorry, you say while well, shaking your head, trying to get the image out of your head of uh, of her out of your mind. Charlotte just giggles. Come on, today is training class. I was told that you have a personal IS unit. I would like to see it. Charlotte says, grabbing your hand, dragging you out of the room. She leads you to the training field where the class is, is waiting. All right, you slackers. For those that have a personal IS unit, you are the train with each other. Everyone else will use the normal school IS units to train. You hear Miss Arimura set, yell as you enter the training field. You watch everyone get into IS units and watch your friends summon theirs. You wait, watch your you you wait, watch for a few seconds before summoning yours. Your unit surrounds your body. You you see everyone look, stop and look at your unit. Is something the matter? You ask. What is the name of your unit? Uh, Chris, I've never seen such a unit. Charlotte asked. This unit is called Rai Karui Kairi. I think I'm saying that right. It's named after it's named after lightning because of its speed. It has two cans attached to the for, to it for a ranged combat and a blade that is seven feet long for melee combat. 
The colors are 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 metallic blue, pink and purple. Sim, uh, pink and purple symbolizes the clashing of energy as created by lightning. As far as I know, there isn't any other unit that can compare to its speed. You say, flames, flame. I would like you to demonstrate your power, the the power of your unit. Cecilia and Hoki, you're up. Your goal is to take on both of them on flames. Miss Orimar commands the three of you. You nod your head, and before anything could anyone could register it, you're already shooting up into the sky. You're about to pull out your blade when you feel when you feel a sharp pain in your hand, causing you to lose focus and fall towards the ground. The ground was coming at you with such speed that that you close your impact, waiting for impact. The impact never came. You open your eyes and see Charlotte holding you before passing out again. Everything went black. Chapter 7, Special Medical Treatment, or quote, Special Medical Treatment. Once again, you wake up in the infirmary. When you look around, you see that there are needles in your arm and fluids running through them. You sit up and when you suddenly are hugged by Charlotte. You look in her direction and see Miss Ormar standing behind her. Well, Mr. Flame, it seems like you have a major problem. We are going to be doing tests if you and if you approve some medical experimentation to try and help with your solution, situation. Do you agree? Uh, do you approve of going through the experiments, Miss Orimar asks as an ask. I'll try anything if it helps me, you say. Miss Orimar hands you some documents. You will need to fill these out and sign them then. It's, a, it's, it's to give a consent for us to do the experiments and avoid us any responsibility of any negative results from happening, Ms. Ornmoor says. You grab the documents and the pen that she held out to you and start filling them out. You don't, you don't even hesitate on filling them out. After you had signed all the documents and filled out your information on them, you hand them back to Ms. Ornmoor. Prepare yourself. The experiments start in the morning. We have something that should help a little with, with the pain that you how below what the pain do you get oh we will be taking you off the equipment for the rest of the day and you're to spend uh spend doing it what you want miss ormore tells you the doctor slowly unhook you off the machines and once you're free you got up and put your regular put on your regular clothes charlotte watched you get dressed and just in case you need help or anything else might uh, or something else might that might happen after you're done getting dressed you decide to head to a boy's bathhouse to relax a little once you reach the bathhouse charlotte leaves you and tells you she'll be right back I wonder why, but she would be coming back, but decided to go and, and relax in the hot spring. That was set up for you and Ichika. After ten minutes, for after about ten minutes went by, and you were relaxing, you hear a knock on the doors of the bathhouse. Come in, come in. You say loudly, not thinking anything of it, while trying to ease your mind. Charlotte walks in wearing a bathing suit. You couldn't help but stare. Uh, why are you in here? You exclaim with a shocked tone. I couldn't let you be in here just in case something else happened. You still haven't re re fully recovered your strength, and I didn't want you to be by yourself. Do you want me to leave? Charlotte asked, said and asked. No, you're fine. I just have to get used to sharing a, ro sharing a room, being around girls eventually. Just don't stare at me is all I ask, you say. You manage to keep your composure as she climbs into the hot spring. She slides in the spring and leans against the wall of the, of the spring, keeping a good distance from you to keep you from them, keep from making you uncomfortable. I'm um, Charlotte. Can I tell you something that uh, that stays between us? You ask. I won't tell anyone if you wish. Charlotte says. Well, it's just that you're the first girl that hasn't looked at me weird and treated me like a friend. I've never been friend good with girls. I always feel embarrassed saying this, but I think I'm starting to fall in love with a girl, and I'm not sure how she would react if I told her. How should I tell her that I love? You say and ask. Well, that's a tough thing to do, but I would I'd say be honest and tell her. It would be on her to, to decide what to do from there. Charlotte says. Thanks, Charlotte. I think it's about time to head back to the room and get some rest. Sounds like I have a busy day tomorrow. You say, climbing out while wiping a, a towel around to hide your, the private parts from view. Charlotte climbs out and drives herself off and waits for you out on the hallway. Eventually, you both come. Eventually, you come out and the both of you head back to your room to get some sleep. Little do you know, uh. Uh, that the pain you were going to have to deal with was just going to be starting tomorrow morning. Okay, uh, chapter 8, Experimentation. You wake up uh, with Charlotte cuddling against you. You were you knew that you weren't together, but it still felt nice and knew that you, prob that you couldn't, probably couldn't take each of his place. You slowly sit up, causing Charlotte to stir and eventually wake up. Once you were both, uh, once you both were awake, you take a shower first and relax your body and try to try to ease your state of mind, because you knew what was happening today. You weren't going to lie to yourself. You're nervous about the upcoming experiments. And Charlotte, after Charlotte was done with her shower, she walked to the labs with you and decided to stay by your side for the day. The school was given the day off because Miss Omar thought it was best for the day first day of experiment to have the staff observe and give feedback if they saw anything that needed to be addressed during the experiments. 
After everyone, of course, that was your friend, lended support and was going to stay by your side, but Charlotte was the only one that was going to be in the rooms while the experiments were going on. Once you both reached the labs, you saw some of the staffs already in nurse and doctor's outfits. When you fully stepped inside, inside the room, everyone's attention turned towards you. Ah, perfect timing, Flame. Do you mind laying down on the table? We will, of course, be strapping you down just as a precaution, Miss Orimura says. You walk up to the table and look back at Charlotte. She nods her head in support, and you lay down on the table. The doctors move uh, uh, move quickly and efficiently, and efficiently strapping you down. They brought a few machines over and slowly moved ar certain articles of clothing where necessary to attach wires to you. They wanted to monitor your health as the experiments were happening just in case something happened. Eventually, the only article you had left was your boxers. You had wires uh, just covering about your entire body. One of the nurses pulled out a needle and slowly sl slow uh, slides it into your arm. The needle had a clear liquid in that went into your arm that that went through it into your arm and it slowly started to and slowly you started to lose feeling your body you still could move but had to make sure by looking at uh, that what part of your body you tried to move we are giving some medication uh that is to numb your body so you won't feel any pain Ms. orimore says you nod your head slowly as they slowly to inject slowly uh, start to slowly inject needles with a pink tint to the liquid in you all of a sudden you're passed out when you came to your senses, you realized you're in a dream. You're inside your house with your parents. You were doing your studies like you usually did. All of a sudden, there was a, a loud bang, and flames started rising out, up on the outside of the house, showing through the windows. Your father's your father picks you up in a rush and carries you outside. After your father sits you on the ground, he rushes back in to save your mother. You could hear your father screaming your mother's name when all of a sudden the house suddenly when all of a sudden the house collapsed in on itself, killing both of them. All of a sudden, all you could do. For, for that, all you could do is scream for them. Meanwhile, in reality, what the hell is going on? Miss Orimara says. It seems his subconscious is taking over, and whatever is going on inside his head is causing him to go into convulsions. One of the doctor says, "Get him awake right now. The shake could kill him." Miss Orimara yells. The doctor starts injecting you with like, needles filled with a filled of a bluish liquid to counter the sleep effect of the pink liquid. Back to dream state. All of a sudden, you feel like you're on fire while screaming. Your mind breaks up breaks and you're wake you end up waking up screaming back to reality you wake up thrashing feeling like your body's on fire calm down chris you hear a sweet voice right next to you you break you break your teeth and get the pain under control with help from the voice that you eventually realize belongs to charlotte your forehead was covered in sweat from the nightmare get him off there and get into a chair we need to get him cleaned up doc uh, miss orimar barks to the doctors why did you need to clean me up, you asked. Well, you started having convulsions and ended up biting the inside of your cheek, and your tongue's causing you to bleed. You keep spitting blood up on yourself, Charlotte says. You look down and notice that you are covered in blood. When you look up and look around the room, you see your friends with a scared look on their faces. Chapter 9, Experimentation Part 2. You lay back down as the st medical staff cleans your body of all the blood and, and relax. Slowly, they inject you with a, a needle, and slowly the pain subsides. You feel, other than the minor injury in your mouth, and then and then tell them continue. They ordered you to remember what the original experiments were done uh, that uh, what the original experiments that were done on you were were while they had some wires attached to your head. You slowly remember the experiments. You delve deep inside your mind, trying to remember everything. After a while, you're able to remember a lot of the experiments done on you. You slowly stood up, and when you tried, uh, there came a loud cracking noise around your lower section of your rib cage. You slowly, instantly bend over and puking out blood. Tatanashi and Charlotte instantly grab you and lay you back down on the table while doctors come over to check you out. The result was that you three of your ribs broke when you tried to stand up. The doctors figured out quickly that it was due to the ribs being fractured when you had the convulsions. You still ordered them to continue the experiments. They slowly had you rest your body and patch you up until they, while they analyzed the data on your memories of what was done to you. After a while, uh, everyone waited for the news. Miss Orimura came, came in. We have sufficient data for now. I re recommend you rest and let your body heal. We will continue the experience after you have healed. Tatanashe, Charlotte, take him to his room. And you are excused for, from class for the next two days to take care of him, Charlotte, Miss Orimura said. It was weird for Miss Orimura to use a uh, student's first name, uh, for, or first or last name, without saying Miss or Mister, but it was probably due to the stress of the experience being done. The girls helped you back to the room, and Tatsunashi left after making sure things were in order. Charlotte helped you gain change into your attire for bed, causing you to blush until you're almost naked during the process. After making sure you're in bed and comfortable, she sat down at the desk to do her studies. Occasionally, she would. Uh, help you get up to use the bathroom when you need it. 
Because you needed to bless each time since she saw your private areas when helping you and she would bring you food when needed. You slept off and on, causing uh, off and on from the pain, causing you to pass out every once in a while. After the second day, the staff had brought you a wheelchair so you could still get to class. You decided your injuries weren't going to keep you from your studies, and they only agreed that it was the only thing they could do to compromise with you as you as, so you wouldn't cause further injury to yourself. No matter what, you're going to prove you're still fit to handle any any situation that handle any situation that came your way. Every girl in, in in the school helped you out as much as possible, but you didn't care much about it. You only cared about how Charlotte uh, how Charlotte was holding up and how she felt. Chapter ten: La uh, Mental Experiments and Last Physical Experiment? Question mark. You were taking a shower before starting your day off when there was a knock on the door to your room, to the door of your room. I'll get it, yelled Charlotte as you got out of the shower. You dried off and and got and was getting dressed when the do bathroom door opened and Mr. Wormer was standing there. You blushed because you only had your boxers on. Oh, don't be embarrassed. I've seen a, na a, guy, a boy naked before. I'm not into guys anyway. I do have a question, though, to, a that, to ask that is vital for the experience. Would you mind if we put a chip inside of your head to record your thoughts and dreams? That might help us better understand your mental state. Of course, you, you will think everything you think about will be shown to us in video form to us, but we will keep it confidential between the medical staff. No other students will know ex uh, anything about this except your friends, Ms. Orimar says. That's fine. If it helps me get out of my system to where I can function properly, that's fine, you say. I will meet you in the medical bay in, in an hour and a half then for the procedure, Ms. Orimar says as she walks away. Charlotte helps you get the rest of your clothes on and helps you into your wheelchair. Once you're in your wheelchair, Charlotte calls everyone on their cell phone and contacted them. She told them that what was going on, and they all agreed to meet in the medical lab. Once she was done contacting everybody, she grabbed the back of your chair, wheelchair and headed headed to the medical lab. Once you guys get there, um, uh, you see the table for you to lie down on is already set up. Charlotte helps you on t up on the table, and Miss Orimar comes into the room. We are going to sedate you for the procedure. We don't think anything will go wrong. I would also like to introduce you to Hokey's older sister, Dr. Ta Ta Tanabe Shinonono. She is the one that created the ICE units and is quite diverse in subjects, Miss Orimar said. You nod at, Ms. at Hokey's older sister and close your eyes. You feel a small prick in your arm and then you're out like a light. You weren't sure how long it was until you are wake woken up by Charlotte tapping on your arm. All right, the chip is in now. Once you're healed up, healed enough we'll be giving you a few mental tests to see what is going on just keep in mind we can see every bit last bit of your thoughts if there's anything that you wish to keep secret see keep secret from everyone just let us know by thinking it inside your head that you want something kept secret and we'll be we'll keep quiet to only the staff knowing about it you nod and touch your so the section of your head where the chip was put in you were a bit surprised to feel that it was just a small inc incision area you only hope that charlotte wouldn't didn't find out what you were thinking when it came to her Chapter 11. Thoughts can be personal. Once you were back in your wheelchair, it was time to head to class. Charlotte pushed you to class and sat down in, your seat, in her seat once she was done helping you in yours. Your mind drifted off to you and Charlotte being together. You were still daydreaming when Miss Yamada and Miss Orimura entered the class to start class. Miss Orimura had a smirk on her face when she looked at you. Once she noticed, you quickly thought, don't say anything to her. Miss Orimura pulled out a tablet device looking to see what was on your mind. She nodded in your direction and after looking at the device... Charlotte noticed the silent interaction and gave you a look as if asking what was, was what what that was all about. You yeah, acted like nothing happened and looked straight forward and started paying attention to Miss, what Miss Yamada was saying on the IS unit's capabilities. After Char after classes, Charlotte came to help you in your wheelchair. What was that all about? Charlotte asked. What do you mean? You yeah, acted asked, acting like nothing happened before classes. You're hiding something, but I suppose if you want to keep it a secret, that's your choice. Charlotte said. You played everything off smoothly, and Charlotte didn't ask you again. You know you dodged it this time, but it was, but what if it happens again? You're enjoying the ride in the wheelchair back to your room when Miss Marie Moore's voice came on the school intercom, asking you to come to her office. Charlotte immediately turned around and headed to Miss Orimore's office. You thought you were in trouble for some reason, but was surprised that Miss Orimore had a smirk on her face when you entered her office. Please wait outside, Charlotte. Chris and me have something important to talk about, Miss Orimore said. Charlotte stepped outside the room, leaving you with Miss Orimore. Don't you think it's about time to tell her? She might find out if you accidentally slip up and forget to tell us not to say anything about it, Miss Orimore says. How do I tell her, though? I don't want her to think anything bad of me if I tell her that I've fallen in love with her, you say. I don't think she'll think anything bad about you. She seems to care about you a lot. Just, just, uh, just be honest with her about your feelings. I think you might get a surprise that you will like. Now your assignment is for, for, is for tonight is to tell her, Miss Orimore says. Miss Orimore goes to the door and asks Charlotte to take you to her room. Charlotte obliges and we go to the room. 
Can we? Can you please lock the door? I have something to tell, talk to you about. I don't want anyone to interrupt us. This is important, you say. Charlotte nods and locks the door so you two won't be interrupted. So am I? Well, am I? Am I finally going to find? Am I going to find out what that was earlier today, before class started? Charlotte asks. You nod your head yes, and Charlotte sat down on her bed facing you. She waited for you to speak. Well, I'm not good when it comes to girls or the subject. When I talk, I'm about to talk about Charlotte. I love you, and I've, and I ha and have since the first time I saw you. You say, looking up at her to see her reaction. To your surprise, she had a smile and tears running down her face. All of a sudden, she leapt at you and kissed you deeply. You wrap, you wrap your arms around her and hold her. After the kiss, after the hug and kiss, you both lay down in your bed and end up cuddling, eventually falling asleep while holding on to each other. Your chapter twelve. Your surprise. You wake up and realize that it's morning time. Uh, you look down because you feel something heavy on your chest and see Charlotte curled up next to you with your, her head on your chest. You wrap, you wrap your arm around her and hold her tightly against you. It was the first time that you expressed any feelings towards the girl. She slowly woke up and looked up at you. So I take it that you feel the same way, you say and ask? Yes, she says, trying to snuggle closer to you. What would you like to do today since it's the weekend? She ask. How about you and me lay here for a few before I get up and cook us breakfast, she says. I would love that, you say, still having your arm wrapped tightly against her arm wrapped tightly against you. It didn't take long before there was a knock on the door. You slowly move so Charlotte could answer the door. You answer the door having a beautiful having a, she answers she answers the door having a beautiful face, smile on her face. She came back into the room with all of her all of your friends behind her. They were happy to see that you were doing all right. Charlotte cooked breakfast for everyone while they chatted uh enjoying spending time with both you and Charlotte. You're happy to have a group of friends that cared about you. After thinking such ha happiness for a few minutes, you end up crying because you never thought something of having such good friends and someone loving you would ever happen. Charlotte instantly came to your side as if she knew what you were thinking. She kissed you. Shh, we will never be leave your side. We are all here for you, Charlotte said. Everyone's surprised to see Charlotte kiss you. What is this, you two? Charlotte, uh, Laura asked. He told me last night that he loved me, finally. I love him as well, Charlotte says. Glad for you. I hope it works out for you two and that you both have a happy life together, Tatsunashi says. Thanks, guys, you say. Charlotte grabs a hold of you again and kisses you deeply in front of everyone. She, when she's done kissing you, decide to tell him whose idea it was to finally tell Charlotte how you felt. Well, Ichika, I couldn't have done it without your put sister putting pressure on me to do it. Any chance I, I get a, any way I can get a chance to thank her, you say and ask? Thank who, you hear as Miss Ornmar steps into the room. To thank you for making me finally express my feelings to Charlotte, you say. No, I didn't need to thank me, kid. Just trying to help you out. You need to learn to speak what's on your mind instead of hold, always hold, hiding everything. Um, uh, Miss Ornmar says, Sis! Ichika exclaims. Well, it's true. Besides, I came to here to grab you all. It's time to start on the treatment process of treating your problem. The doctors think they have enough information to help you. Are you ready, Chris? Miss Ornmar says in a... Chapter 14, Fast Healing and Deepening the Relationship. It was about a week later after the last test and having the issue fixed to where you could use your eyes unit again. You wake up early before Charlotte had a chance to uh, wake up. You slide out of bed, laying Charlotte asleep. <coughs> you went into the kitchen area and made breakfast for Charlotte to surprise her. Your ribs seem to, he to be healed all the way. Charlotte wakes up just as you approach the bed, carrying a tray with breakfast on it for her. Honey, you shouldn't be moving around like that with your ribs like that, Charlotte says loudly. I'm fine. My ribs seem to be healed already. Look, take the tray and I will show you, you say, handing her the tray. Charlotte takes the tray and you lay down on the ground and do some crunches, showing her that your ribs are fully healed. After doing a few crunches and showing that you aren't in any pain, you grab some clothes and head to the shower. You decide to relax your body and mind under the hot water. You're enjoying the shower when you hear the bathroom door open up. Do you need, do you need something, my, cha my cherry? You said loud enough to where she could hear you. You heard footsteps approach you. You raised an eyebrow, wondering what Charlotte was doing, when all of a sudden the door to the shower opened up and Charlotte stepped into it with you being in there. What are you doing, you ask her. Um, I wanted to take a shower with you, she says with an embarrassed look on her face. You smile and turn her around to where you could see her back and start scrubbing her back lightly. I don't think you're ready to take it to the next step, but we can at least bathe together are you okay with that you say and ask yes she says with laying a, 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 sly, a sigh of pleasure you give her shoulders a massage to help ease the tension that she had ha has had from worrying about you after you were done scrubbing your back she scrubbed your back it helped ease the rest of the tension that you had after you're done you both were done bathing you both got out wrapping a towel around yourselves 
You get out of the bathroom and find all of the girls standing around. They just stare when they see both of you come out of the bathroom together in just a towel. Chapter 15, Explanation and Under Attack. You and Charlotte just look at everyone having an embarrassed look on your faces. It's not what it looks like, both you and Charlotte say at the same time. If that's the case, you care to explain? We just took a shower together is all. Nothing physical happened between us, you say with a serious look on your face. Right. Anyways, what do we have planned for today? Just as you're about to open your mouth to make a suggestion, the alarm signaling the Academy's defense system came on blaring. Ms. Ori Morris' voice came on, came on the intercom. We are under attack. All students with personal IS units report to battle stations. Everyone else, please head to the bunkers for safety. Repeat, we are under attack. This is not a drill. All the girls along with you and each got immediately make your way to sit up and prepare. This is going to be your first serious fight, that you ho and, ho and you hope they didn't screw up. For some odd reason, you weren't nervous. Eventually making your way through the crowd of students, Ichika and the girls, and you reach the station to prepare. Everyone was almost suited and ready to go when Miss Ormar came in. Listen up. Listen up. We have some information uh, on the enemy. Some of them have been identified as being Phantom Task. The others that are with them, we are unsure of who they are. Keep your wits out there. Other staff members will be assisting the fight. Make sure to protect each other out there. And one other thing, Miss Ori, Ori Mora says... Ms. Orimura looks at Ichika. We do have one other person with our last name. Her name is Madoka Orimura, and she's your twin sister. Capture her if you can, Ms. Orimura says to Ichika. Ichika nods, but looks a, little looks a little confused. He shakes his head to get in his mind in the right place. Okay, I will take Reen, Cecilia, and Tatanashi with me for Team A. Chris, Lara, Charlotte, Hoki, and Kanzashi will make Team B. Since you don't have any real combat experience, uh, Chris, Kanzashi will be your team's commander. She will get you guys through the fight. Just listen to her. If everything is everyone's ready, then let's deploy, Ichika says. Everyone gets into positions and launch and then launches off on uh, launches off out on, of the docking bay. Once up in the air, Ichika takes his team to cover the academy from the north to west to from north to west to south, while your team's objective is to protect the academy from north to east to south. You call your blade and get ready to engage the enemy. When your team reaches the east gate area, you see some of the staff are already on the ground unconscious and were bleeding badly. Thankfully, there were medical teams uh, evacuating the severely injured already. You were ordered by Kanzashi to stay by her side to defend her as she gave, as she gave out orders to the team. It wasn't long before everyone except you and, Kanz you and Kanzashi were engaged in battle. You were thinking it was going to be over quickly when an enemy IS unit broke through the team's defense and headed towards you. You, you brought up your blade and managed to intercept her blade. The red, the red readout on your system identified the IS unit as Silent Zephyr. You had heard about the unit being powerful and knew this fight was going to be easy. Once you guys pushed off of each other, the girl spoke. Where is Ichika or Yumura? She commanded. Sorry, but he isn't here right now. Why do you want him specifically, you asked. You thought about drawing the conversation out might bite some time. Your only hope was that you could draw it out that long enough. I want to kill him and watch him su suffer as he slowly dies, the girl said. You're about to respond when your IS unit intercom came on. Chris, watch out. That is Madoka Urimura. Hold her off until I arrive. I'm suing up in my IS unit right now. Uh, Miss Urimura commanded you. You weren't sure what exactly was going on here, but you decided to follow instructions. So you looked back at Kanzashi out of the corner of your eye, and she nods her head at which that she heard the conversation. You immediately engage your blade in the second form and charge at Madoka, hoping to catch her off guard. But she seemed to anticipate your movement, your move, and quickly intercepted it with her, with her blade. You both had your blades locked when you saw Miss Urimura appear at your side. Madoka quickly disengaged from you and stopped in midair. So it's you. So it's you, Miss Madoka said with no hostility in her voice. Yes, younger sister. How about you give up now and lower your weapon? I promise no one here will attempt anything towards you, Miss Urimura says. To your surprise, Madoka puts her weapon away and disengages her units. Her unit. She just touch, gently touches the ground with the bottom of her feet. When she resigned from combat, the rest of the enemy took off from combat and ran. You had no clue as why, but was happy the fight was over. After all, after all, after all, the enemy had retreated. Everyone went back to the docking bay to do damage report. Luckily for you, the only damage was done to your weapon the engi en en engineering could fix within an hour. Everyone was told to, to gather in the staff room after inspection. After everyone was done, you all head to the staff room and find Miss Orimura staying at a table with Madoka. Madoka gave a sneer as Ichika came into the room. Miss or Orimura ordered everyone to sit down. Once everyone sat down, you could feel the tension in the air. You hoped nothing bad was going to happen. 
Chapter 16. Friend or Foe Once everyone was seated down at the table, Miss Orimura cleared her throat to get everyone's attention. As you all know, this is Madoka Orimura. She is my younger sister and Ichika's twin sister. Apparently she hates Ichika. I don't even know why. Would you care to introduce yourself, Miss Orimura says. Well, if you know, must know why I hate my brother, it's because after we were separated when we were young after our parents' death, Jafio only showed interest in Ichika. I felt like I meant nothing to her. The orphan orphanage separated us, keeping Ichika together with Chifuyu. No one came to look for me. I felt betrayed. Since Chifuyu has explained things to me, I guess I shouldn't hate Ichika anymore. I would like to try and get to know all of you. I have never had a friend. I wish to make peace, to show that I am true to my word, that I will give you some information as useful. Phantom Task is actually just a small task force of a organization called Phantom Hive. Phantom Hive's true nature is building IS units secretly to eventually make an army built big enough to gain total control of the world. They've been trying to get Dr. Shinonono to help them with making IS cores. So far, she has declined and claimed there's only one person she would accept a request from, and it would only be a, pers and it would only be a personal level for her. That person is Jafuyu. I'm very sorry if I caused any of you harm, Madoka says. Well, I have orders for everyone. You all will be an escort for Madoka and make sure no one attacks her. She is known by everyone and well hated. I'm also sorry to do this to you, Madoka, but everyone is to keep an eye on you, on her, and to report to me if she does anything wrong. There will be at least two of you guarding and watching her at all times. Plus, sorry to do this to you, little brother, but she will be staying with you, Miss Orimura commands. Understood, Ichika says. Madoka walks over to Ichika and gets down on one knee. I'm sorry for the trouble I, ca I have caused you, Madoka says apologetically. Ichika grabs her and lifts her up. Look, we are supposed to be family. How about we start over new and let the past be in the past, Ichika says. Ichika suddenly pulls Madoka into a hug. Everyone smiles but doesn't let their but don't let their guard down. Now it's time to watch and see if Madoka is trying to be good or if she has hidden mo hidden motives behind her. Chapter 17. Madoka's new life begins. Yeah. It's kind of late. Why don't we pack it in, you say? That sounds like a good idea. Everyone has everyone's phone number. If 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 something happens, let everyone know, Hokey says. Everyone heads back heads out to go back to the room. You and Charlotte and Ichika guard Madoka while walking back to your rooms. You're in Charlotte's room was right next to Ichika and Madoka, so it made easy to escort. You engage just your blade of Raikiri Ra just to show that you aren't messing around to warn everyone to back off. It made you feel guilty to try and intimidate people, but if it prevented an issue from happening, you felt it was worth it. Everyone gave Madoka glares of hatred as you all walked by. The only girls in the academy that didn't avoid you were the maintenance crew. You were almost to your room when the three girls on the maintenance crew approached. They started asking Madoka questions about her asking it. Here, take my bracelet to examine it. It contains all the data on silence ever. You can study it all you want, Madoka says, handing over her IS unit's equipment. The maintenance crew giggled and danked her. They even gave her a hug, causing Madoka to blush. After the maintenance crew left, you and, Mad and Charlotte made sure that Ichika and, Madu and Madoka was in, in their room before you and, and Charlotte went to sl sleep for the night. Madoka and Ichika's point of view. Would you mind if I called you by brother, Madoka asked Ichika. Well, we are twins. I don't mind. I just want to get to know the sister of mine that I don't know anything about, Ichika says. Well, I didn't join uh, Phantom Tass to do evil deeds. My main focus was trying to get a chance to see Chifuyu face to face. I just wanted her to love me again, Madoka says. Ichika sits down next to her and hugs her. Well, we are all here together now. That's what counts. Neither me nor Chifuyu will let you go this time. We are here for you. If you ever need my help, feel free to ask, Ichika says, holding Madoka. Madoka finally relaxes and, and starts laying her guard down. She eventually falls asleep while, while Ichika was holding her. Ichika thought it was nice to have a bigger family now. He didn't move because he didn't want to wake Madoka from her peaceful sleep. From peaceful sleep, he eventually fell, uh, f uh, ended up falling asleep while still holding Madoka. Chapter eighteen: Madoka's injury and your chivalry. You woke up with Charlotte next to you, gently shaking Charlotte. She wakes up and smiles at you when she sees your face. You surprise her by giving her a morning kiss. You both start rubbing your hands on each other when your door room door. A burst open, each is standing there with a worried look on his face. What's going on, you ask? Madoka is hurt from that fight. She woke up coughing blood. Help me get her to the infirmary, Ichika says in a panicked voice. You and Charlotte both come running into each Madoka and Ichika's room, finding Madoka on the floor coughing up more blood. She was pale and looked like she was going through hell itself. You reach her and pick her up. You engage your IS and, and inertia booster to get her there quick. 
People in the hallway could could hear the sound of your booster and move quickly to get out of the way. Some looked scared and the others were curious on what had happened. People could put, see the blood on your IS unit, though, which started to cause panic. Tatanashi fortunately showed up to handle the situation. It's scary to think the infamous wielder of the silent Zephyr could be hurt badly. You managed to reach the infirmary in record time. You started yelling for a doctor and six staff showed up. Miss Omura was one of them. What the hell is going on, Miss Orimura yelled. Madoka was actually hurt pr during pretty badly during the fight. Apparently, it just caught up to her this morning, Ichika says. Miss Orimura runs to Madoka's side instantly and starts examining her immediately. She has suffered internal injuries. We need to operate fast, Miss Orimura says. The medical staff got to immediately got tools and started to go started going to work on Madoka right there. You, Ichika, and Char Charlotte and Miss Orimura just watched over it all. While well, waiting for news, Tatanashi came into the infirmary. What's going What's going on, Tatanashi asked. You quickly explain the details. Well, I got news for you. A bunch of girls came here to see Madoka. I think more, stu think more students are accepting her as a fellow student. More students are accepting her as a fellow student. The girl has some something about her that is special, Tatanashi says. After a few minutes, you go into the hallway and see a bunch of girls there waiting for news. You hold up your hand up to silence them when, uh, when they all try to talk at once. I understand you are all worried. Rest assured, the medical staff will make sure she is all right. I'm, I know this is probably doesn't mean much coming for me, but thank you for accepting Madoka as a fellow student, you say loudly for all of them to hear. Just as you finish talking, the maintenance crew approaches. We need to talk to you. Apparently, her IS unit uses her energy a lot to use it. We are currently working on the unit to where it won't hurt her, her, or hurt her physically to use it, the maintenance crew says. That would explain why, she, even though she didn't get hit, that she has internal injuries. Please go in and tell them all. I have something to do now, you say. The maintenance crew goes into the infirmary to report while you stand there in deep thought of what could be applied to her unit from mirrors that could be used for limit breakers on her unit to prevent her from getting hurt. All right, chapter 19, limit breaks. Everyone assembles in the gymnasium. The student council branch off on each side of you of... Of the of the line wings coming from your side, even though some of the student council didn't still didn't care too much for Madoka, they still believed their job was to protect anyone that was a student, and held their beliefs in regard, and kept their integrity. I know that not everyone likes Madoka or Imura, but as a job, but as a job as students of this academy, we are to uphold the system that we are to protect each other. You say. Stand there for a few minutes, looking at everyone's face, making sure your statements stunk, sunk in their minds. I have talked personally with Madoka myself, and I have seen what's inside her heart. I don't think she's lying about anything. As a man, I cannot sit here and, ha and, see, and see a girl get hurt, nor as a student of the academy, I can't abandon our motto to protect each other. So I would like anyone to come forth with ideas to help put limits on our IS unit so it won't physically hurt her to use it, you say. After a few minutes, a girl raises her hand, you say. Go ahead, you say. Well, my S unit uh, used to do the same. I have a gauge of mine that measures my output of energy that I'm using, and it has a lock on it to prevent it from going too high for energy use. Also, I have a program that reroutes energy to individual, far individual parts of my S unit when needed, a girl, the girl says. That would be useful, you said. You said. That just then, Kanzashi walks into the gymnasium. I have something that can that can help with that also. I have been studying her IS unit personally along with my older sister, and I can create a program that sets limit breaks on the unit. How fast can we make those, adju those these adjustments, you, you'll ask. Just g give me and Tatanashi two days, and it will be done, Kanzashi says. All right, go ahead and start. As for everyone else, if you come up with an idea, please contact me personally on my cell phone. Here's my number, you say, pointing at the board behind you. Everyone starts pulling out their phones and putting your number in. All right, everyone is dismissed for now, you say loudly. Once everyone is done, you sit down on the edge of the platform, hoping that the plans will work. Chapter 20, Lost in Thought. You head back to your room after the meeting in the gymnasium. Uh, you, were so lo you were so lost in thought that you reached your room without realizing it. You enter your room and sit down at your desk. You slowly pull out a brand new notebook and a pen. Your goal for today was to jot down all the things that were a problem with Madoka's IS unit. You just focus on your chest that hours had passed by and didn't even realize when Charlotte got back and came to the room. Charlotte watched you for a while before clearing her throat. You turned in her direction and were surprised to see her there. Sorry, I didn't hear you come in, you say. Are you all right? You seem, seem to be stressed out, Charlotte asked and says. Honestly, no. I'm I'm worried about uh, Madoka's IS unit. It's such a sophisticated system that it'll be hard to fix the problem with it. I don't even know where to start on start on it. 
I may be spending a lot of time with the girls in the docking bay working on it, you say. Charlotte gets up and wraps her arms around you, trying to soothe your emotions. She can see that you are stressed out and pushing your limits. You both were trying to chill out when Miss Orimura's voice entered the intercom in your room. Chris, please report to my office. I want you, Charlotte, Ishika, and Madoka to meet me in my office. I have something important to discuss, Miss Orimura said over the intercom. We'll be there shortly, you respond, letting go of the intercom button. Both you and Charlotte get up and head to Miss Orimura's office. It didn't take long to get there. When you entered the office, you saw that Ichika and Madoka were there. Madoka was in a wheelchair. You look at Miss Orimura and saw that she was mad and serious. What the hell is this, Madoka? Miss Orimura says, holding up a small device with a camera on it. I honestly don't know, Madoka said, shrinking back in fear. I didn't fully trust you, and then the mechanic crew found us on your sis unit. I figured out, figured you were sent here to spy, Miss Orimura says with anger and hatred in her voice. I honestly didn't know. I'll take any punch me to see fish. Just don't send me away from you both, Madoka says, crying. Miss Orimura thinks for a moment, for a while. Everyone remains quiet. After a while, Miss Orimura talks. You are on probation. You will not leave your room. A special task force will be in place to watch your every movement. You are prohibited from using your IS until further notice. I have your device right now for activating your unit. Your scrollwork will be brought to you. Your meals will be brought to you. If you need to use the showering facilities, me, the girls, Ichika, and Chris will be accompanying you. In other words, the boys will see you naked. If you do not agree to these terms, you'll be kicked out of the academy. Do you understand? Ms. Orimura asked, says, and a said and asked Madoka. I understand, Madoka said while looking sad. Brandon, or Chris, you'll be accompanying Madoka in her room from here on out until each goes back for the day. Your meals will be brought to you along with your studies. Sorry to do this, but your IRS unit is the most advanced out of anyone's. If she does anything, you have, you have permission to use extreme force, Miss Orimura says. Yes, ma'am, you say. Very well, you're all dismissed, Miss Orimura says. You look over at Madoka and see that she looks like she has been betrayed. In a way, you feel so you felt sorry for her, but couldn't help but th help think she should have been more careful and made sure that her, her unit had been bugged by the enemy. Everyone gets up and heads back to their rooms for the night. You and Charlotte lay down in your bed. You both kiss each other. After a while, you fall asleep from Charlotte massaging your shoulders and back. Before you fell asleep, you couldn't get the image of the look of hatred coming from Miss Orimura's face towards Madoka out of your mind. Chapter 21, Confronting Your Superior. You wake up and continue thinking about the situation between Missing Mora and Madoka. Charlotte knows that you weren't getting dressed. We have class this morning. You should get ready, Charlotte said. Go on ahead. I'll meet you there. I have some, something important that needs to come first, you say. Very well. Just be safe, all right? I know you're thinking about doing something, Charlotte says. I'm going to confront someone give them a reality check. Nothing physical, just a talking to. Don't worry, I'll be fine, you say. You get up and give Charlotte a kiss before she heads off to class, surprising her. She looks back at you just to make sure you're all right before leaving for class. All right, time to get down to business. You thought as you got dressed, you dress professionally and head out to find a person. You hope, it goes well, you hope it goes well for you. You walk the halls for a while until classes are in session. Knowing your target was in the classroom already, you wait outside of class for, to make your move. You could hear attendance being taken. You hear Miss Orimura's voice in Charlotte's. Do you know where Flames is? You hear Miss Orimura ask Charlotte. He had something to do, he said, Charlotte said. Don't excuse him from class. Miss Yamada, please take color of class and today's studies while I go search for him, Miss Orimura said. You heard four footsteps hang towards the door and you had a smirk on your face, knowing your tactic worked. Now it's time to face the music and confront her. The lock disengaged and the door opened. Miss Orimar walked out, shining the door behind her. As she went to head towards your room, you called to her from behind. She instantly turned around and had a look of anger on her face. What do you think you are doing skipping class, Miss Orimar said. I'm here to talk to you alone. I planned the situation, the scenario out just to get you by yourself. Why don't we go to your office and discuss this? I don't want to cause a commotion in front of everyone, you say. Very well. This better be good, Miss Morimura says, leading the way to her office. It doesn't take long to get to her office. She opens the door and, walk, and you walk in, sitting in the chair in front of her desk. She sits down in her chair and faces you. What is this about? Miss Orimura asks. This is about you and Madoka, you say. What about it? Miss Orimura asks with a caution in her voice. It's time to face the past. Before you say anything, hear me out. When we left your office yesterday, I saw the look of hatred on your face from Madoka. If she is... Ichika's twin, twin and your younger sister to give her a chance to redeem herself. I haven't seen her do anything wrong. She's actually starting to make friends here and seems happy here. 
I don't know what happened in the past, but this is what I see. You all three are family. No matter what happened in the past, family's family. You may have differences. That is fine. She wants to be accepted by you. So that was her whole reason for coming here. It's time for you to face the music, Miss Orimura. I faith in her as a friend. Instead of always treating her like a thorn on your side, maybe you need to start accepting her and try to be a family for once. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be getting to my classes. You say, uh, get and get up, leaving the room before she could speak. You left Miss Orimura in her office with a shocked look on her face. Now it's time for Miss Orimura to make a decision. You only hope she made the right choice. You had to, hear, to do class to do your studies that was required of you. Chapter 22, Helping Miss Oimura. You're studying hard, pretty hard when Miss Oimura approaches you and asks you to step out in the, hall, out in the hallway to talk. The class got really quiet because ne Miss Oimura never pulled anyone out of class. You look at Charlotte and nod your head for her to keep studying. Charlotte nods back, nods back at you, meaning she understands. You get up from your desk and follow Miss Oimura out to the hallway and feel everyone stares as you walk by them. Once in the hallway, you close the door behind you and, and face Miss Oimura. She looks kind of nervous and speaks slowly as if she's choosing her words carefully. How do I go about fit, trying to fix things between me and, Miss, and me and Madoka? I have treated her like she doesn't exist for years, Miss Oimura says. I can help with that. You, Madoka, and Ichika come to meet Charlotte in my room tonight. Make sure you are hungry. We are going to sit down and have dinner. No list, though. I can only help you so much. Some of the stuff you'll have to decide on how to handle on your own, you say. You walk back to the walk into the classroom, ignoring the whispers around you. Look at Charlotte and wink. You sit back down, sit down, back down at your desk, and go to, back to your studies like nothing happened. After classes are over with, Chapter Twenty Eight, Together Forever, the finale. Dear diary, I have the dream man for my life. He is good to me and always takes care of me any way he can. This is everyone's final year for school. We all f applied for the job of being security for the academy and got accepted upon graduation. I couldn't be more happier than I am right now. It was strange at first for falling, falling for someone other than Ichika, but it worked out for me. After graduation, me and Chris plan on getting married. Ms. Orimura said we could hold the wedding here at the academy. There was difficult times for everyone, but we all made it through. The other girls have finally agreed to share Ichika. He has finally realized that all the all all the girls love him, but he couldn't decide on which one to pick. I just hope he can I, I just hope he can handle a harem with that thick head of his. Everyone seems to get along now, and that is all that matters. Uh um, okay. Since our fight with Phantom Task, it has been quiet and there hasn't been any attacks since then. We think Phantom Hive have gone into hiding and building themselves back up and will try something eventually, but we'll be ready for them. Madoka has settled ni in nicely and even has a boyfriend outside of the academy. Miss Orimar also spends a lot of time with Madoka now. Those two can always be seen together. I'm glad that they are a solid family again. I hope one day to have a child of my own, but we are deciding to go slow. Well, since it's getting late, I'm going to sign off for the night until the next entry. What are you doing? You ask, coming out of the shower. Just writing down memories to go back through when we were older. Just remember all the good times that we have had, all we have all had together. Charlotte says. Why don't we come in bed and watch a movie? You ask. I'd like that. Charlotte says. What type of movie would you like to watch? You ask. Something romantic. Charlotte says. Um. Charlotte climbs into bed as you put a movie in that you knew she liked. You climb into bed and she curls up against you as you both watch a movie before going to sleep. You couldn't be happier having a peaceful and happy life with Charlotte. The end. That's the la yep. That's the last part of the story. I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, some of these went a lot longer than I thought, and there's actually seven parts of vo voice I've had to do right now for this, which is kind of ridiculous. But you know what? Whatever. It's fine by me as long as I know I've. As long as I know I'm enjoying this, then it's fine by me, I guess. All right, well, I'll see you all next time. Bye bye. Good, Matoka says. I see you have very good grades. I'm very, I'm quite proud of you for that. Miss Orimura says. Madoka blushes slightly. Miss Orimura gets up and walks behind Madoka. Before uh, Madoka could react, Miss Orimura wraps Madoka in a hug. Let's start over and become a family again. One, again, a family once again. Miss Orimura says. Madoka smiles and hugs Miss Orimura back. You smile, seeing the interaction between the two, and grab. Charlotte's hand slightly squeezing it. Charlotte looks at you over at you and smiles, finally understanding what the dinner was about. How funny you two, you say with a smirk on your face. You two just kept on eating, like acting like everything was normal, when all of a sudden Madoka jumped on him, giving him a hug. Charlotte and you couldn't help but laugh at them. Um, Madoka, why, why are they touching me? Yuchika says nervously. Madoka looks down and sees her chest resting on his arm, and realizes that 
Ichika was nervous when boobs were touching him. She immediately removed her chest from his arm. Sorry about that. Madoka says, screw it. Ichika says, giving Madoka a hug. Thank you, Chris. Miss Orimore says, I didn't really do anything. The bonds were already there, and so were the desires for everyone to be a family again. You say, waving it off like not, like it wasn't a big deal. All of, a, all of a sudden, Charlotte kisses you. You are the best boyfriend someone could have, Charlotte says, causing you to blush. I tried to be, you say nervously. After the di after dinner was over, the other three left, le uh, left, leaving you just you and Charlotte alone. Charlotte strips down to her bra and panties. She lays down on her bed. Remember that I said I said that you owe me? Well, come on over here and lay down with me. You lay down next to her, knowing you couldn't refuse. <laughs> 